Hello, uh, welcome to the remote controllers video presentation. Um, our title is Hands Up, Speak Up, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand why uh, this is our title. And without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> so our task problem definition. So our problem, um, whenever students and workers meet up remotely, uh, it is common for people to start talking over each other, which causes problems such as confusion and a disruption of conversation flow. And if anyone that has dealt with Zoom or anything like that, um, you know, this is pretty common. And this is theme, theme relevant because in, class in classrooms or workplaces, uh, people will usually use a physical gesture uh, such as raising a hand or putting up a little finger to raise, <laughs> to signal that they have something to say without interrupting. Uh, however, in a remote setting, that ability to signal that physical gesture is removed. And how do we know this is typical? Well, um, you know, I don't know about anyone else, but in my elementary years, um, uh, my my elementary teachers would always um, would always uh, emphasize raising your hands whenever you want to speak, and you know my my teachers would always nag about that. And why do you think so? Uh, and this is because to so that there can be order and a flow of conversation in the classroom. And <clears throat> yeah, so here are seven stages of action for our problem. Um, so first, imagine I'm in a video call. So my goal would be to speak in a discussion and meeting through the calling software. And so for my plan, I would want to gather my thoughts and try to decide what I want to contribute to the meeting. Then I would specify what it is I'm going to say, decide what it is, and then take a deep breath before beginning my sentence. As I perform, that's when I actually begin speaking. For perceive, um, I may, as I'm talking, I may perceive that there are one or two people who are also beginning to speak at the same time as me. For interpret, I may find the situation awkward because multiple people attempted to speak at once and I'm the one talking. Or I may even interpret my actions as rude because I may have interrupted someone else who may have started beginning speaking right before me. And without the usual social cues that you would get if you were having this conversation face to face, it's really hard to tell. And for compare, um, after the situation is over, I would see that my goal of productively contributing to the discussion or meeting did not actually match the outcome of the actions in the situation. So traditionally, our potential users would be those who have to regularly have remote meetings for work, school, or other activities and organizations. However, because of everything going on this year with the pandemic, um, our group of potential users is actually much larger than it typically would have been. For example, Zoom reported surpassing over 300 million daily meeting participants um, this April. So this means that our potential users now also includes people who usually did not really have meetings virtually before 2020. So these are people who may not even be even accustomed to video calls. So um, our potential users were largely utilized video calls for meetings, collaborative work and discussions but the ability to have this natural flow of conversation is impeded because of the online format for everyone. So a working solution will allow users to run meetings efficiently and effectively, cooperate and complete tasks, and also have productive discussions without interruptions. Considering this change in the user base and especially the emphasis of large group meetings that are being conducted on Zoom. There's a lot of science on um, how these big groups and conversations with large meeting groups can be moderated. And current video platforms generally have two different display modes where you can either see the speaker only um, and a very narrow subset of other participants, or you can do gallery mode where all participants are displayed, but very small. Um, and in the latter mode, which is often used for meetings in group settings, you are inundated with visual information. And it can even be difficult to find the speaker because the signifier 
that someone is speaking is a simple highlighted box or other not or other discrete indicator. Um, and various scientific studies have showed that directional grazes are very hard to interpret with the single camera interface of Zoom or other video software. And because of that, um, video muted conversations have less smooth amounts of transition and floor control and simultaneous speech is affected. So one existing solution to this problem is the hand raise feature in Zoom and Teams. And participants can raise their hand so the meeting host knows that they want to speak. And the pros of this feature is that it allows participants to show that they have something to say without interrupting the meeting. It is also easy for the users to find the raise hand button. And you can also lower your hand if you are finished speaking. So there is easy reversal of action. And some cons of this feature is that one, it could be hard for the meeting host to see the small hand icon next to a person's name if they're not paying attention. So they may not get called on. And also the participants are displayed in the participant sidebar in order that they raise their hands. So those who raise their hands first are shown at the top. And if the meeting organizer does not know this beforehand, there are no other signifiers that obviously let the host know what order the hands were raised. And this feature is also geared more towards a classroom or a panel interview setting instead of a collaborative meeting. You also need to manually unmute and mute yourself when called on by the meeting host. And this could be a problem because you could ignore the hand raise feature, unmute yourself and cause a disruption to the meeting. And currently in Zoom, the meeting host does not have the option to raise their hand. And the principles that this hand raise feature conform to is one, it strives for consistency. The hand raise button looks the same as all the other buttons on the meeting interface. And the hand raise notification also shows up in the same spot as the other nonverbal reactions. And this feature also offers informative feedback. The raise hand button changes to lower hand when it's clicked on and vice versa. Um, which shows up when the button is clicked and your hand is up. There is also a small hand in the top left corner of your video box and to the right of your name in the participants list so you know your hand is raised. And there is also error prevention. So when you click the hand raise button, it changes to lower hand. So at one, there's only one possible action so that you cannot raise your hand again once it is already raised and vice versa. So for our group's proposed solution, we propose that there will be a button at the bottom of the Zoom's uh, uh, meeting, maybe called focus mode, that the meeting host can activate. When this mode is activated, everyone is muted and it brings up a pop-up window for the host that has an action button that shows the cues of everyone in line to speak. When everyone in the queue um, has registered into the pop-up window, there are a number from one at the top to underneath and etc. When you are muted and not in queue, there's one button that will say speak, which puts you up into queue to speak. When you're in the queue, there's a button removed from queue that you can click if you do not need to speak anymore. When it's your turn to speak, there will be a sound, a pop-up, or another indicator to let you know that it is your turn to speak in case you are distracted or not looking at the call. You are automatically unmuted and there's a button that says finish speaking, and that is available for when you press, when your turn is over. You are then muted, and the next person in queue is unmuted and it's their turn. The chat box will still be available if you need to make a comment without interrupt, interrupting any current speaker. And the meeting host will have the ability to end someone's turn if they forget to hit the finish speaking button, or if someone's away from the keyboard when it's their turn to speak and the meeting does not get stuck. And for our final proposed solution of measuring success, although it may be difficult to measure the success of this feature through like numbers, you can possibly measure the success by adding a quick pop-up rating 
of the feature that we will add that probably ranges from do not help, did not help to very helpful using the Likert scale. This way, the users that use this option um, can give us feedback about their personal experiences and feelings on the solution without taking up too much of their time. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you.